Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Enrico. Um, first, I want to apologise. Um, when Bernie and Enrico invited me to present today, I didn't know I was going to be skiing. So um, these slides are actually put together down thread, though, and I've just realised they're not particularly good, but bear with me on that. Um, the presentations today, have, have, to me, have highlighted a few things. Uh, the first is that, as Enrico said, I sit on um, the AI Alliance, and part of what I do is I look after consumer healthcare. So I run the consumer flagship. And as a previous speaker, and Aruna has spoken about, I think if we don't keep the consumer at the centre of what we think and do, then we're going to actually be, we're going to end up with a lot of technology which doesn't really do much. Um, okay, so quickly, um, so two things. Haroon has actually stolen my thunder, uh, so that's the first thing. So I've actually put another problem in or another um, uh, concern. Um, and then Enrico has stolen some of my thunder as well. So, so this is, um, uh, he had a lovely little slide of AI, how quickly it's been, it's been taken up. And his was based upon uh, venture capitalists and how much money they're throwing into it. My one's a little bit older. Um, it looks at just the technology across the years and how quickly it's, it actually is um, taken to society and uh, become mainstream. You can see the big thing from this um, graph is that it's happening faster. Uh, and I think for us today, talking about AI and my concern, or not my concern, my thing is what's the next uh, piece of technology which we, we don't even know, which, which, but which will be um, <coughs> mainstream in five years. So just keep that in the back of your mind. While we talk about it now, I think a lot of places around the world, you look at places like India and that where, because uh, of their population, they have to do things in mass. Uh, a lot of their, their knowledge there, I think, um, will be interesting to see how that fares out in, in AI and to come. Um, second thing is I want to thank uh, my colleagues at Health Direct. Um, they've given me a lot of the uh, input to this. Um, this is something that Ian Vale did who worked for me. Um, and this is looking at, we did a big study across the population at, at how people interact with technology. And this was, the question was asked, um, who do you go for health information? And as you expect, GPs, doctors, medical folk were, were uh, top of the list. But then there's a whole raft of, of others. And I think this is where we have to, AI, I think, can fit in. This other piece is where we can actually get, and we spoke about intelligence, we can get uh, a intelligence source, which is um, uh, assessed, tested, um, assured by a body. And that's why we look at getting standards in place. And so the individual can say, well, I know this has been something where there's a level of knowledge, uh, whether it be clinical input, whether it be uh, scientific input put into it, and it'll give me a good answer, as opposed to we all hear about going onto Google and finding whatever you want. Uh, it does occur. Uh, I think that, um, from my experience at Health Direct, uh, that a lot of the information out there actually is not assessed, assured by a clinician, and so you have to be concerned. So I think there is a market for the consumer. The other thing, and this will be more uh, in terms of my presentation, um, everyone always assumes older people uh, don't really uh, engage in technology. If you look at the tail on this graph here, and this is just a look at Facebook users, I think it was last year, um, there is still, uh, if you look percentage-wise, there is a significant percentage of people who are over say 44, 45, who the young folk would deem as being aged, who actually use technology. So that's the other thing, technology is being used. So when we say that um, individuals won't use technology, I think that's probably a bit of a concern. I think individuals will use technology. The biggest issue of AI, I think, is branding. Uh, I think um, Terminator has a lot to answer for uh, in terms of giving uh, individuals the wrong idea what AI can do, but I think that's one thing that yeah, as an industry has to do. So, my problem. Um, I, for my um, pain, uh, at one stage in my life, uh, managed my aged care for the government. Uh, my aged care, for those who don't know, is the way that individual interacts in government services, in this case, aged care services, and how you actually procure your aged care services. Uh, not all the population can use this, it is a means-tested process, so that's the first thing, as my parents are just going through it now, uh, even I didn't know that, so there is a means-tested pro process to it. But essentially, this is from a technology point of view, my aged care, so, uh, does this got a, no, oh, sorry. Okay, so, um, I don't have a pointer, but anyway, um, my aged care runs across three, I think, government departments in Canada, so, that's the first problem. Um, we talk about fra fragmentation of data, we have fragmentation of government services, fragmentation of departments. Um, and it actually has an assessor workforce down the bottom right hand corner, which is both RASs and ACATs, so that's both a uh, state based and non state based uh, assessor workforce. Uh, you actually have the service providers up in the top left hand corner, 
drop that just uh, they are hospitals they are not for profits they are um, Joe's Mills. Um and then you actually have the the users down here now the users interestingly enough is as you expect uh, the aged person themselves uh, unfortunately um, I'm nearly aged and that actually worries me because I don't think I'm nearly aged but uh, the the rules are put down a lot, a lot longer when people got old faster I think um, so you have the aged people themselves you have the carers and the carers can be family so in my instance I'm not my parents care but I actually interact in aged care for them uh, and then you also have the service providers so these are the people who use this system uh, very um, consumer use based there um, and then, of course, uh, the piece which I was interested in at this stage is this little bit here, which is the front door to aged care. But that back office there is a lot of technology, a lot of systems, a lot of, so you've got Medicare working together, you've got DHS, you've got all these government parts working together. So it is actually is a big complex beast. Um, just quickly, uh, just so for those in the room who think there's no money in aged care, there's a bit of money in it. Um, as you can see from there, this is from um, the service providers was a review form. I actually have the uh, the Ibis Wall report on aged care providers in Australia. So you can see there's money. You can see that the government spend is pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, as time progresses, they're spending more money in it. So, uh, like all things in healthcare, that will not be that uh, will not be um, something which we cannot keep going uh, or manage in terms of the government. Uh, and so, something there has to be a process in place where we can actually. Uh, do a large to scale delivery of healthcare, uh, aged care in this instance, but healthcare anywhere, all of the presen presenters today have been talking about at scale, and this is what we uh, look for in AI as well. So that's just quickly uh, a bit about aged care. So uh, so this is important to my one of my problems today. So you can see there's uh, per year, so this is the people interacting into aged care, ring the uh, 1 800 number, you've got 1.5 million people come into it. Um, You've got uh, every year a quarter of a million new people coming to aged care. So it is a big beast. It is, is moving along and um, at this stage it's manageable. Uh, this is just the interaction into it. Some people think aged care is not manageable, but I want to comment on that. Um, so my problem, one. Um, as I said, I had a problem and then Haroon decided to actually steal it so um, and what I wanted to come to today is everyone's been there and this is a no slight on my on my previous presenters but one of the biggest issues about uh, anything in technology and AI is actually getting hold of some data so I was hoping to come today to say oh, I've got some data sets for you um, I'm still hoping to get that I'm in discussions with a few people and we might be able to get data sets so fingers crossed um, but my first problem is um, when people interact in in um, my aged care uh, there is a there's a there's an issue in that and this is all healthcare is that as an individual you don't really know what you don't know and to be honest a lot of people in australia aging is something which comes upon them it's never planned for so it's my advice to people in the room who have of the age start planning for aged care plan on how you want to retire it's very important plan on how you actually want to move into a care facility People don't do that. So they come into this aged care program completely blind and as an individual who's looked after my parents, I'm the same. And you bring up my aged care. Now, it is a very much a government-based program where they're giving information to individuals to try and help support them. But um, it is something which I think needs, in, in terms of a consumer-friendly program, probably needs to have some improvement. And they're doing that in Canberra. So, so this is not slighting the, 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 the people in Canberra. They actually are moving towards it. But I think AI can come in and actually help a little bit more. And what I mean by that is, and this is again, I've butchered a few slides, so don't read too closely on this, but I, I look at that interaction in the first place. How do you actually come in and actually engage in, in, uh, in my aged care? Can there be some type of AI program behind that would actually, and I just use Google Home here as an example of the interface, so just be realise two different things, how you interface in the technology and how you actually use AI is two different things. So the AI sitting behind it is how do you actually get real time, uh, interaction with a Google Home, say, hey Google, example will be, you know, I'm 55, how do I, you know, work into aged care, what type of package should my, my parent get, simple things like that which are very difficult for people to understand. So, so my problem is that interaction with aged care is really cumbersome, can we use a piece of AI to actually deliver that? Now what I was going to offer was um, the ability to actually parse all the questions into that context and for the last 12 months. 
So you actually have, know what the questions are, and you know what the answers are, and you can actually build that into your modeling. So that was, hopefully, will still come off. So that's the first problem. How do you create a piece of tech which will allow that seamless interaction into um, uh, my aged care? The benefit for this is that there's no diagnosis involved. So again, you remove the clinical uh, aspect of this. This is purely just a, call it a humanics uh, problem where we just want someone to actually have a good interaction into my aged care and actually engage properly and understand where they fit in the, into the system. Problem number one. If you can do that, I know some people in Canberra who will love you to bits. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, that was, that was a mistake. I realised that I had two slides of the same thing. Problem number two. Um, this is my original problem, um, and I didn't have any data for this one, so I know now that the data's been taken off the table, so in actual fact, everyone did me a favour. Um, the June report was a report which came down a couple of years ago around uh, my aged care, and one of the problem, or one of the identified areas they could see improvements was to actually have a navigator. So a lot of stuff we'll be talking about today, um, if you had an AI avatar, um, you know, for, for any type of engagement with brain. If you could sit here and on your phone you have a little bit of code which says, Michael, you're a diabetic, you probably shouldn't be having that crusty cream today. You know, or you know, it's um, you know, you're you're, you're actually in your case that there's a little bit of bleeding, maybe you should pop down a CG. That would be brilliant. And so I see AI as being I, I, IQ as being EQ and IQ. IQ is of course the AI, EQ is still that clinical interface, all that humanic space. So something which I think Definitely, there is a place to play uh, for AI. So, June report came down, let's have a navigator. Um, the government's looking towards that, and um, they're looking at basically a physical navigator. Mine is, is more from the virtual point of view. Um, that's the first one. Second one, of course, um, unfortunately, we've all probably read about the Royal Commission, which is going on in, in healthcare, in aged care at the moment. There's a lot of um, uh, issues in the, the provider area. So, the problem, or the, 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 the problem I have in this one, I don't know if I've got actually, uh, okay, yeah. Um, it's really, models of care are changing. Uh, we're gonna change how we, f how we fund healthcare uh, in Australia. Um, this is not, I'm not in any way talking on government's behalf, but my view is that um, the, way the, the, the way we pay for healthcare has to change because it is not actually scalable at the moment. So I think that how we deliver healthcare, models of care will change. We'll probably go to a, uh, an outcomes-based environment, uh, when that will occur, um, you know, within the next, hope for the next 10 years, 15 years. Um, all that going along, um, I think that in, in aged care at the moment, the, the interaction between primary care and aged care actually is, um, needs to be improved. And a lot of it's because of the funding, how the funding is put in place. So the problem I have is that persons in an aged care facility, um, uh, there might not be any clinical staff there. Uh, a lot of aged people, as you're well aware, have seen a very parchment like they might cut their leg or cut their hand. The wound isn't managed. Uh, next thing we know, that aged person is put into an acute care setting. Once you're in an acute care setting, your, your likelihood of leaving that setting actually decreases dramatically. So, what I'd love to have, and I call it the canary, the canary in the mind type of thing, a bit of AI which actually can sit there. And how you actually get information into it, I don't know. Um, but it can actually start alerting at a, a primary care point of view that this patient now needs to have a level of support, um, whether that is at the local GP or whether there is a, a, a primary care piece built into the AI which um, can alert you know, back into the care facility, whichever way. I think something along those lines, a, a piece of code which can actually manage the, the life of an aged person uh, and it can alert when they're actually simple things um, uh, where they can actually be um, uh, seen to and actually supported. Why I say this is because I had a quick look um, about um, preventable hospitalizations in Australia. There are 750,000 of those per year uh, and it's significant, significantly increased above the 65 year olds. So we know that above 65 people have been hospitalized for reasons which are preventable and we know that, and this is anecdotal from my point of view, um, that in an aged care setting, um, people are being put into hospital, which shouldn't be because of simple um, rudimentary illnesses, which we should be managing. So they're my two problems. Uh, fix up that interaction between primary care and aged care, and there is a piece in terms of uh, front ending to my aged care to actually deliver a, a more um, <coughs> focused um, uh, interaction to aged care.